All right. My name is John Simmons. I'm technical executive at the Electric Power Research Institute, Institute which is kind of like being a made man in the mafia. But um, let me just point out, I'm, a, I'm a, just a small cog in a very, very big wheel. EPRI is a nonprofit company that was founded in 1972 by an act of Congress to do research for the public good along with the electric utility industry. And I'm one of about 600, 700 scientists that work for EPRI. Key aspects of EPRI is first off, we're independent. We're largely funded by the electric utility industry, but our mission is for the public good. So we are an independent voice. Sometimes the uh, utility industry hires us for something to do some research. They may not like the results we give them, but they always know that the results are correct. We are nonprofit. We're here to serve the public, and we're collaborative, which means that we bring together the best and brightest people in any industry, national lab, university, and utilities to, to come up with um, a solution. A friend of mine at Consolidated Edison likes to say that none of us is as smart as all of us. Our members are 450 participants in more than 30 countries. And that's, that's important to point out is that we're member uh, funded. So if we develop intellectual property, we don't make money off of selling the intellectual property. Most of the time, it's either open sourced or it's licensed at zero cost. EPRI, yeah, we got a bunch of people in EPRI. So. And here's the money breakdown. But again, I want to point out that this is where we make our money, not in products. So we don't write software. We don't sell software. However, we do develop technology, and we consider ourselves a technology accelerator. So that kind of brings up the question, what am I here to talk to you about? OK, we're a technology accelerator. We gather requirements from the industry, from multiple utilities, in all different kinds of utilities. You know, there's generation utilities and, and uh, transmission utilities and distribution utilities. And we kind of put all the pieces together, and we come up with various technologies. Here's some examples of the technologies that we're, we're working on, everything from the uh, augmented reality to neural networks um, and doing a, a identification of assets, that kind of thing. So I stole this um, slide from Christine Perret out there in the audience. But these are, and I, I did tweak it, though. Uh, these are key enablers for utilities. First of all, protocols and well, let's just stop at protocols. Um, there's a lot of protocols that are out there in the utility industry. We're trying to get a handle on that, come up with, with the, the preferred ones. High-speed network stored and forward. A lot of times, utility workers, for one reason or another, cannot connect back to their back office. Either they're in a dead zone, they're in an area with a high electrical or magnetic field, and they can't talk. So that's, a, that's very important to consider if you're going to get into the, into the business of um, serving the utility industry. And then advanced analytics. Here's kind of an example of two different kinds of, of data here. Um, one is we got some rotating machines here, and we're reading off something, probably a vibration frequency or something like that. And then we've got a menu driven up, um, a menu up here, which could drive analysis for other kinds of data. And there's two basic kinds of data, kind of the real time in the field at the device, and also data that's been ag accumulated or aggregated and then analyzed and brought out. So there's, there's two different kinds of data that we generally see. And then to, to kind of echo what Barry was saying, um, the standards are very important. In the electric utility industry, we have certain standards, and I'll, I'll talk about them in a second. But please, 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 if you develop a, um, an application for the utility, use the standards. Otherwise, you're making my life a living hell. Um, because these, these one-off applications where they come in and you get proprietary communications is, is a real hassle. And also, it's got to it, replace or enhance existing workflows. In other words, utilities are very, very conservative. They're not going to jump on your technology as pretty as it is unless they're getting a significant bump in productivity or safety or one of their, their primary, primary requirements. And then interface with existing back office systems. Believe it or not, a lot of utilities 
are using uh, software that they wrote in the 1970s and they like it that way. Um, so you need to interface with these back office systems and you need to interface with multiple back office systems. The standards that we're going to talk about in a second really help that out. So I am going to talk about um, some technology that we developed at EPRI and I'm going to put the pedal to the metal because I only got five minutes left. But um, here is an example of the augment, augmented reality. Here's a map view of our Knoxville office um, out in front of where my office used to be. And here's the augmented reality view showing the utility assets in the area. Uh, three keys to, or the keys to this are GIS context aware. Anybody ever heard of a GIS, geospatial information system? Few people. Big, big system in the electric utility industry. It says where everything is and how they're connected. And that's what we're visualizing here. SIM standards. SIM stands for Common Information Model for Utilities. It's the IEC, International Electric Technical uh, Set of Standards. And please, like I said, if you're going to do something, use the standards. And the neat thing about the standards is they communicate over XML. And kind of how we got the, the start of this is it occurred to me that the back office application doesn't know or care where it's getting the message from. And that's kind of how we got into this. And then the augmented reality, which you guys are experts in. And then data overlays, overlaying data on the field. So the way this kind of works is that any point of interest out here, if you touch it, you can drop down a menu based on your skill set, your role, and also what kind of an asset it is. So the, the, through the GIS system, the, the application knows what you're standing in front of. If you're standing in front of a relay, it's like, hey, you got to be a journeyman lineman to, to be working on this relay. So it knows and it connects the dots. So any hockey fans out here? Hockey fans. Okay. This is, we've done, uh, we implemented this technology, at, or we're implementing it for utilities. Long Island Power Authority, LIPA, Con Ed, Entergy, and Gas Natural Fenosa. This is just a demo to proof of concept. This is out on Long Island. This is the parking lot for the Long Island Coliseum where the Islanders play. Down here is the Long Island Marriott. Here's a little um, map of where, the, where LIPA's utility, where their underground assets are. They like purple for some reason and dash lines for underground assets. Um, and as we know from Ron Azuma's uh, laws, this is not augmented reality because it's not registered in three dimensions, nor is this. It's interesting. Here's the Marriott down there. But it was a gloomy day while we were there, so we were up on the Regency Club floor um, knocking back a couple of beers, and this is what you see out the, out the window. You see where the assets go across underneath the parking lot. There are some switch banks here. And there's, there it goes again in the parking lot. We got some little noogies here. I don't know what those are, but they show up on the map. And then you can see it becomes above ground here. And this comes in really, really handy, especially when you've got foreign crews working a large outage. So this is the kind of technology that we are looking to accelerate and bring into the electric utility industry. One of the big, big uh, hot button issues right now is storm damage assessment. The Northeast has been hammered by a bunch of storms. They want to be able to get out there, figure what's gone, or broken and do it fast. Here's an example of something that could be possible. Here's a map. You should be able to draw a line around the map, for instance, saying, say we're driving down a boulevard. This Con Ed is really interested in this. Drive down a boulevard, say, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. So you don't have to send a crew down every single street. So you draw a line around it, and it creates a bill of materials here saying exactly what's missing so they know what they got to load on a truck and bring out to the site. Um, generation has special issues. We got uh, indoors and outdoors. Uh, Jonathan mentioned, very important, the crew needs to know on a multi-floor facility where the other crews are and what they're doing because they could be doing something that could jeopardize them. And then I just threw in a, a little example of um, this little 3D uh, uh, spinning machine here. So again, I'm here basically to help you guys break into the electric utility industry by telling you a little bit about what you need to do to make a market of this. And having said that, that's my 10 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, John. We have time for a couple questions. 
how does uh, how does an organization like yours work with you know work with startups or companies that are trying to break into the space and have an opportunity to you know kind of you know further their further your own goals and further their goals as well? What's the what's the relationships look like? Well, there's a couple of ways of, of doing it. I think what we're going to do with this, and my colleague Greg out here has to nod his head in agreement, is I think we're going to let the folks that are interested in this room contact me and maybe have a webcast where we can kind of expound on what is needed for the electric utility industry. And then if somebody wants to, to play nice with us, um, they can do that as well. You know, we, we, it may or may not be a, 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 you know, we pay you kind of situation depending on, on the technology you have to offer. Any other questions? Oh, we in the back. Are you talking about the Esri? The question was if you heard of Map Info. I have, I have not. I think Map Info used to be a product that uh, ESRI had. Um, there's a there's a lot of products out there that overlay maps on. Zoom in on the utilities. They're all EOI, CIS. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things out there. What they don't have is the augmented reality and the ties to the back office systems. And I, I wanted to point out that. That um, the map and the augmented reality interface to, to like four or five back office systems using the standard messages that have been developed. So it's really a thin, extremely thin graphical client that generates and consumes messages. That's what all it really, really is, but it makes it extremely powerful. Okay, Rocco? Yeah, that's about all we have time for. Thanks a lot, John. All right, thanks.